Good evening, and welcome to PMI Spheres Live on UWW-TV. I'm Alex Monti, joined by co-hosts Nazir Spencer and Gabe Sadowski. And we ask you to please excuse our momentary interruption of sports from your regular daily schedule. We have a special edition of the show tonight, as we will be live for an entire hour breaking down the March Madness bracket in its entirety. We'll run through the brackets, discuss our picks, Final Four contenders, and champions, and also highlight potential upsets we think will happen. Gabe, Nazir, are you ready to call your shot and pick the perfect bracket? Let's get it going. Let's do it. If you think so. The upper left corner of the bracket features the East region, headlined by the number one overall seed, UConn Huskies. UConn is looking to become the first team to win back-to-back -back championships since Florida did it in 2006 and 2007. The East region is stacked, though, with the top four seeds all winning their conference championships. Iowa State is the two in this region, Illinois is the three, and Auburn is the four. Other notable teams include two Final Four teams from last season, San Diego State as the five seed and FAU as the eight seed. Nazir, let's run through your picks for the East region, starting with your defending champion Huskies, taking on a first-time tournament team in Stetson. First of all, I want to give a special congratulations out to Stetson. Uh, they made it to March Madness for the first time ever. But unfortunately, it's going to come to a quick end because UConn is going to beat them by about 30, and their best player is going to have 40. So we, we are going to move on to the next one because that's, a, that's an easy swift one, guys. Now it gets a little, it, 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 some, of this is, some, some of these get a little crazy, so bear with me. So Northwestern versus FAU. Now, I don't like Big Ten. We talked about this before the show. Big Ten is not that good to me in basketball or football. But right now, we're going to pick Northwestern to beat FAU because I just, that matchup, they, they, they are very, very good on defense, in my opinion, Northwestern as a team, and I don't think FAU could really, they can keep up with them that, that well. So I think, I think Northwestern will pull this one out and play, visit UConn in the next, in the next round. So we're going to, and then to the next one, we're going to pick San Diego State University, and that is my favorite university. That, that's my favorite college ever. I wanted to go, hit, go there. But we're here, so I'm glad we're here. <laughs> San Diego <laughs> State, <laughs> but we're here, so that's great. San Diego State and versus UAB. UAB, they're going to play an amazing game. It's going to be a very tough matchup for San Diego State. But, you know, last year, if it repeats itself, I don't think it'll repeat itself. But I think they're going to, they're going to make a statement game and visit the next, next team up, which is Auburn versus Yale. Yale played a great game the other day. They, they played outstanding. And so, uh, I mean... That, that one's going to be a tough matchup, too, I, I feel like. But I'm going to have to go with Auburn on that one. Um, Auburn versus San Diego State. That's going to be a great game. That's all i got to say. If that, if that does happen, that's going to be an amazing game. And here's where we get kind of crazy. Oh, <laughs> boy. Now we're getting crazy. Oh, boy. BYU versus Duquesne. Now, I don't mind BYU, but I want to take Duquesne because their offense is very – they're very quick off the ball. I will say that. They, they are very quick. They're very coach, – they're, they're coached very well. And – I just don't think BYU is BYU's year. So I'm going to go Duquesne for my first big upset. I know Northwestern was technically an upset being the nine seed. But 11 versus six, we're going to take Duquesne. I know it's wild, but bear with me. Illinois versus Moorhead State. We're going to take Illinois, uh, Moorhead State. I'm not sure. I, I, don't, I didn't do a lot of research about them because I just kind of forgot. But <laughs> Illinois, I think, is going to pretty much punish this team, but they're, they're not that great of an, uh, a team in, in my opinion either. Um, as soon as they play a, a fast-paced offense, they're out of this, this tournament. And next up, another crazy one, not really to me though, this matchup is like, this is like unfair for, for Washington State, but Drake University will win this game against Washington State. Drake University is playing outstanding ball, my second favorite college by the way. So that, that I'm not being biased, that's just these matchups are great to have all over time so Drake is going to win that game and they will face Iowa State uh, after Iowa State beats South Dakota State because South Dakota State does not stand a chance against Iowa State because they are a very deep team and we'll get to more about Iowa State later on. Fair enough. Yeah you know um, again congrats to Stetson obviously. Um, First tournament appearance. Um, fortunately, I I can't pick you. I can't pick them over UConn. Obviously, it's a one versus six. <laughs> I don't happen. think we have a Virginia and Purdue situation on our hands a third here. One. You know, so um, I I don't think it's very likely. I don't see it happening. Um, going over to FAU and Northwestern. I went. I personally went FAU. You know. Preseason, okay. obviously, they were yep. they're ranked that's in the top twenty-five. Yeah. Obviously, that's preseason. We're all the way <laughs> in March here now, though. But going against a Big Ten team. 
it's not happening. Like, Northwestern, it's not happening. I'm sorry. Oh. So, I got FAU right there. Sorry, Nazir. No, um, man, that, that's a, that's a, that's a toss-up game, man. That's a really it's a toss-up toss toss game. It is. It is, yeah. Big no, time I means it for me. Okay, okay. Here's my first upset, right? San Diego State, okay, UAB. It's that 5-12 matchup, okay? Historically, those 5-12s, like, you got at least one 12 seed upsetting the 5 seed, this right? This is not the one. This, no, this is the one. Not the this one. This is the one. You, not the one. be one the same. They won't get blown up. I, no. San Diego it'll State, be, it'll be a game much actually. love to you guys, okay? I love you guys. You're a great school. I, I went to school with somebody, I think, that ended up going there. Actually, fun fact. But that's cool. That's cool. I, I personally, I have UAB winning this one over San Diego State. That is my first big upset. That is one. For the tournament we so don't far. Like that. <laughs> we don't like you, <laughs> To each their own, I guess. <laughs> going over to Auburn and Yale, um, you know, it's... Are we really going to pick an Ivy League school over Auburn? Are we really? No. 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 Exactly. So I have Auburn moving on. Enough said. Okay. BYU and Duquesne. Again, I'm going to agree with Nazir on this one. I think uh, Duquesne is going to take this one. That's a sleeper team, man. BYU. That is a sleeper team. I do like Duquesne. I do, like, I do have them. Well, we won't get that far, actually. <laughs> uh, Illinois and Moorhead State. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pick my Big Ten team right here to win this, uh, win this first round here. I'm going to pick Illinois over Moorhead State. And then up next, Washington State and Drake. I actually do have Drake moving Good. on as well, Nazir. Good. So yeah. I like the Drake love. <laughs> and then lastly, we got Iowa State and South Dakota State. I have Iowa State moving on, but more on them later. See, here's my thing. I this one thing I I I don't like about Illinois. I don't know what it is. I just have a horrible feeling that they'll somehow lose because the other day. <laughs> They they played a great game, but like not really. Wisconsin mm -hmm. played so much better, mm -hmm. and they just they just came out with a win. And I, I I was watching the game. Wisconsin had the game. It was just their game to lose. Yeah, and they they lost it. So I I don't know what it is. I, they I still won the tournament though. Right. Yeah. I, I, you know, I'm not won. taking in, I'm not taking the win away. I'm just saying there's something wrong. Both those teams. Not I feel even, like not just Illinois. Just Wisconsin too. They they both. I don't know. The, wrong. the thing that's probably making you feel bad because I relate to it very well is the fact that's a Big Ten school. And they are just such a great conference for disappointing in the bracket and in the know. tournament. <laughs> that, that's why I decided to just go full send. I'm taking Moorhead State. I'm not taking my chances. Wow. Okay. Anything Big Ten, get them out of here. Right. I'm not even going like to be playing around. Your bracket's also. fun. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm throwing it at the wall because you figure it's March Madness. You got to embrace the March. madness it and is. just see where it goes. Indeed March. But uh, I took Drake as well, agreeing Good. with you both. Iowa State, obviously, win the Big 12 championship. That's definitely going to amount for something mm -hmm. uh northwestern obviously out of here big 10 forget about it you guys are sleeping man <laughs> san diego state i did have beating uab uh, obviously i don't even need to talk about uconn that's just yeah that's absurd, as can be. Uh, auburn again ivy league school come on now i did do byu just because i could see duquesne despite the fact that they should win hmm. just not winning that's fair. Just yeah. because. Because that's happens. just how it goes. There's always yeah. the teams that will disappoint despite the expectations. And, like, they should do better. But in the end, they just kind of fall flat. And perhaps the lights will just be a little bit too bright for them. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, it's just – it'll be interesting to see how the East shakes out. How are you feeling about the rankings? Do you feel like there's any teams that should have been placed differently? I, um, oh, go ahead. I think the matchup between Drake and Washington State is just that's, – that's a – that's a great game, but it's Drake's that's like Drake's favorite that game, I'm pretty sure. That's so, so yeah. that's like even you know, being ranked lower mm. as a ten seed against mm -hmm. a seven seed, that's kinda crazy. I don't that that seeding is ridiculous. But <laughs> I like it though. I like it. It makes March better. Yeah, that, that's definitely one of the stronger ones I know we had going on. Right. And we're gonna take a short break. When we come back, we'll move on to the South region and discuss all of our picks there. Don't go anywhere. This is PO Myospheres on UWW TV.
NCAA and its member schools offer nearly half a million college athletes a path to go pro in something other than sports. Learn more at NCAA.org. You know, for Hawk Talk, you know, I mean, especially on days I'm hosting, uh, you really need to be up early looking at those news stories. Even the night before, I've been finding topics that I can incorporate in the show, and I feel like we get a conversation going. Once you get the opportunity to do that with other people who appreciate it the same level as you do, it makes it that much more enjoyable. For everything sports, tune in Monday through Thursday at 91.7 The Edge or watch us on UWW-TV. Are you bored on campus? Then come down to Warhawk Alley in the University Center. We have everything you need to take a break from your studies and have a great time. So come blow off some steam with our air hockey, darts, foosball, video games, eight top-of-the-line Brunswick pool tables, and our 10-lane bowling alley. We have nightly specials, blacklight bowling, tournaments, and tons of chances to win prizes. For more information or to set up a reservation, call Warhawk Alley at 262-472-5681. Here at UW-Whitewater Intramural Sports, we have a motto, a sport for everyone and everyone in a sport. Had a blast. Always have fun at intramurals. Every day we strive to go above and beyond that goal by providing healthy exercise, promoting leisure education, and giving students that competitive atmosphere they are looking for. Yes! 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 It's exciting. Brings me back to those uh, high school days with Friday Night Lights. With our 25 different intramural sports offered, we guarantee that we have a sport for you. Go to our website and find your sport today. Welcome back to our March Madness special on PMI Spheres live here on UWW-TV. We'll be moving on to the South Region now and continue talking about the South Region in the upper right corner of the bracket. Houston, Cougar, Houston Cougars, <laughs> wow, once again claimed the number one seed and are also a popular pick to win it all again. Their region is filled with some of the, our hometown favorites including Wisconsin and also including the Golden Eagles of Marquette as the two seed and the Badgers of Wisconsin at five. Other notable teams include Kentucky as the three seed, Duke as the four seed, and Texas Tech as the six. Gabe, you get the first honors of the South. Who do you see winning these matchups? All right, so I'm just going to quick speed through these really quick here. Um, Houston, Longwood, I got Houston there. Nebraska, Texas A&M, I got Nebraska moving on. I know it's a Big Wrong Ten choice. team. I know, I know, I know, I know. First mistake. It is a mistake. <laughs> uh, Wisconsin and James Madison, I got Wisconsin moving on Second there. Mistake. I got a, a That's one. my homer pick. I'm sorry. That's a tough one, too. Um, Duke and Vermont. I have Vermont moving on. That's probably my big upset that's here like, on the South bracket. I know that's a big like shock. Wait, wait. You're gonna take Vermont over Duke, but not James Madison over Wisconsin. That's like three strikes, Ooh. man. You're out of here. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Um, Texas Tech and NC State. I have NC State moving on here. I do oh. like them. Obviously, they won their conference tournament. Texas Tech. Um, and that I take that seriously too. You know, try and it, it try matters. and factor that in. You know, wherever yeah. I can. Uh, and then moving on to Kentucky and Oakland, I have Kentucky moving on there. Uh, Florida, and then this will either be Colorado or Boise State. Um, I'm assuming Colorado is going to beat Boise State. Then I'm going to assume that Colorado is going to beat Florida. So I have uh, I like Colorado that. moving Absolutely. on there. I like that. Then Marquette and Western Kentucky, I have Marquette moving on there. Going on to the second round, um, we got Houston, Nebraska. I got Houston moving on there. Wisconsin and Vermont. I got Wisconsin moving on. Uh, again, it's my big homer pick. I got to stay consistent. Um, NC State and Kentucky. I got NC State moving on, actually, over Kentucky. Interesting. Then Colorado and Marquette. I have Marquette winning here then. Going into the Elite Eight, Houston and Wisconsin. I got Houston winning there. Sorry, Badger fans. Can only go so far. <laughs> NC State and Marquette. 
I got the Wolfpack winning. I have NC State over Marquette there. Got NC State doing a heck of a run here, don't you? I do. I, I like do. That. That's, yeah, that's I do fun. like that. But that said, with NC State, I do have them losing to Houston in the Elite. Or I guess that was my Sweet 16 in the last round. This is my Elite 8 pick then. Houston Good over NC State. Good job. Houston moves on to the Final Four then. Well, we got pretty similar, similar picks, I feel like, for this one. But I'll go along right. with mine. Houston beats Longwood. That, I mean, that's, hey, I will say, Longwood has a 16 seat. That is a, that's a sleeper. Watch, watch for that, okay? I want everyone to watch for that. Nebraska versus Texas A&M. Now, for this bracket, I have Nebraska, but every other bracket that I've done, Texas A&M. I, I have a feeling Texas A&M will play Houston, and that's going to be a great game. Battle of Texas right there. And then I got Wisconsin over James Madison, Duke over Vermont, Texas Tech over NC State, Kentucky over Oakland. Florida over Boise or Colorado State. I don't think I, I don't, and I don't I don't think they're gonna lose. You got to pick one of those those first four teams. At least. I, mean, I don't know about that. I, I just don't think they're they are capable of being Florida. But anyways, <laughs> we got Marquette beating Western Kentucky, and we're gonna start from the bottom. We got Marquette over Florida. I think Marquette over Florida makes sense, uh, even though Wisconsin's teams they really suck against Florida teams. I don't know why. I don't know what what, that, what the deal matchup. is, but they they never beat Florida teams, and I I think this is their year if they if they were to win, go to that matchup. And then Texas Tech over Kentucky. That is going to be my big upset for this round of 32, mm. because I think I don't think Kentucky can make it this far without you know those big players that they usually have. Um, Wisconsin over Duke. I think I think they get the revenge. I think Wisconsin. It's Wisconsin's time to get the revenge on this this side of the bracket. And Houston over Nebraska, and then Houston versus Wisconsin. I got Houston. Okay, Houston's Houston's my favorite right now in this whole bracket. So we're gonna continue with that. And then we got Texas Tech over Marquette. I got Texas Tech going a long way. And we're gonna get a round two of Battle of Texas. Houston versus Texas Tech, and that okay. is going to be a great. Great Elite Eight, and Houston wins that. I like Not it. Bad, and then my also, just so we just because we didn't get to it, my East uh, Elite Eight winner is going to be Iowa State. I think oh, Auburn State. beats mm. UConn, and then Iowa State wins that side of the bracket. I do like the Auburn UConn. That's a fair point. That's yep. a fair point. Yep. Uh, for me, obviously, yeah, Houston's the way to go. I mean, the, this is the number one seed for a reason. They're great, man. I don't uh, know what it is, man. That's just something about that just, team. They're one. just. It's funny, they fire. were on that same corner last year, too. They were. Yeah, I don't know what happened. They just... They're just, they're just like, destined to be there. It's a yeah. weird, weird thing. Uh, as far as Nebraska, Texas A&M, you already know the answer. Big Ten, get them out of here. <laughs> Texas A&M, on to the next round. Such a fun bracket. The, the, the next round is going to be this uh, next matchup is the same. Wisconsin's James Madison. Come on, James Madison. This is the 12-5 and five upset that I'm expecting. There's right, always like one. And fair. this is a popular one lately like among experts. Uh, Duke, I have beaten Vermont, NC State beating Texas Tech, Kentucky, I have Colorado winning, and then also Colorado beating Florida. Why? What is that? Can someone explain I'm this just, to me? I'm Why? I'm just not trusting Florida. Why? <laughs> Why do you trust Colorado? <laughs> it's not that I trust Colorado. It's just that I don't trust Florida. There's a difference. Oh, my goodness. It's not that I have more trust. It's a lack of trust. I don't think Florida's going to go far, but <laughs> Colorado? <laughs> Are you kidding? Gosh. And then I, you'll, you'll love the next round. I've got Marquette winning, and then after that, have Colorado beating Marquette. What? Marquette is another school. Colorado. That is great. Again, it's not because of Colorado. <laughs> the Deion Sanders effect. Colorado Sanders is just a placeholder at this point. Because <laughs> realistically, it's just Marquette. They're going to disappoint. They do that a lot. They're yeah, usually second round. Oh, Chaka that's true. Smart, he is not made for the playoffs. That's He's true. a regular season coach. I agree with that, yeah. Kentucky have beating NC State. I have Duke beating James Madison. And then Houston beating uh, Texas A&M. And then here's where it gets continuously wild. I have Duke beating Houston. I just feel like this is going to be the new regime. I feel like they're going to rise up and they're going to kind of start to follow in the footsteps of their history and such. Kyle uh -huh. Filipowski is going to be that player to really push him forward. Duke. Why not? Why not? You always got to adjust Duke. Uh -huh. uh, get Kentucky, have them beat in Colorado. Colorado's great run finally comes to an end. Uh, and then between Duke and Kentucky, I do have Duke winning in a very classic matchup of the Battle of the Blue Bloods. <sighs> So I, I believe, I mean, I don't know how it happened. Once I got to this point, it's like, wait, I still have Duke here? I, ah, this doesn't feel right. I don't think I But everything see leading that. up to that felt good. That's so. like watching the Niners play the Chiefs in the Super Bowl, Duke versus Kentucky. I don't think I ever want to see that again. I, I want to see something new, which is, is why we're going with Houston and, you know, versus Texas Tech. I mean, that's, hey. that's the matchup that we need to see. We need to see a Texas team. 
the Texas team going at it. No, that, that's fair. That's fair. I mean, you love to see the new, but history repeats itself, and I feel like that can be the case here. Like I said, the Battle of the Blue Bloods. It's, again, not sure how Duke got here, but it just it felt right going through the process, and so getting to this point just made sense. And I really, you can't doubt it in the end. Anything can happen in the brackets, and why not that? But Colorado? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not over that yet, man. I'm just not. It's not that I trust Colorado. It's that I don't trust I mean, the I, team's Colorado face. I would trust NC State over Colorado yeah. to beat Texas Tech. Colorado is nothing but a placeholder. Like, this could be Boise, Boise State, and they could just be doing the same thing. It doesn't matter too much. I just happened to pick them in that match. Well, I personally think Boise State's going to win. I don't think Colorado's okay, got it. There you go. Maybe Boise no, State goes on the no. sick run. Well, if Boise State no. wins, then they're Colorado's losing to Florida. Winning. No, they're not Colorado's losing to Florida. Winning. Nobody's losing to Florida. Florida is losing to whoever wins that game. Marquette's not losing to Florida. Well, they, they That's could. true, because they're going to lose to like Colorado or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. See... Oh my goodness. I just, I, I, I maybe, maybe I have to do some research or something on this. I'm just, it's like I said, it's not that I think Colorado wins, it's that I think Marquette and Florida lose. It's just a matter of that. I feel more negatively about so, those teams than I feel positively about the so, other. So, so what's your take on James Madison and Wisconsin then? Because you're, you have the it's most primary. interesting black bracket, so I want to hear your. Hey, who knows? Maybe that means they'll be the most correct because March Madness, you got to embrace the madness. But for the Wisconsin James Madison, I mean, James Madison is a team very hot, and there a lot of experts are saying that this is going to be an upset to watch yeah. out for. And plus, with Wisconsin, for one, Big Ten school. I know I'm a broken record, but I'm just, <laughs> I have a vendetta against them at this point. Hey, I, I completely <laughs> understand, dude. And I, I'm, I'm just feeling there's always the 12 5 upset. This feels like the perfect yeah. time, like 31 3. It just, it just, everything about it feels right. So you think. And I feel like Wisconsin, they got hot at the end, but they were playing just abysmally throughout a lot of the season. Like, it was just nothing that you really wanted to yeah, be watching. If there's a time you want to get hot, though, it's, it it's is, during March, it though. It is at the end, but I'm just. <sighs> I, I, can we all agree that the South is prop? in my opinion, I think this is the weakest side of the bracket. I think so. Yeah, I yeah. think no, it's I'll the weakest that, side, personally, this is, because. Yeah, this is Houston's side of the bracket. There are some some side of the brackets that are just like absurd like there's mm -hmm. some matchups that we haven't even gotten to that we will and that, that are going to <laughs> blow a lot of people's minds and you know that i'm i'm ready for it really i really am mm -hmm. yeah but i mean yeah, like it's like the east that's a strong one the south is not where it's at see i'll i'll i'll, I'll give you guys this one too in the east duquesne i got them beating <laughs> illinois as well they're, they're going to be byu and illinois no, that's this this no. is this is a great take by me I'm and you're you. hating me for doing colorado that's huh? this duquesne though <laughs> Over Colorado and boys and whatever the other one. I'm Boise just State. saying. I'm just saying. Anybody can do it. It's March. We've now made it through our first half of the bracket. We're gonna take another quick break, and when we return, we'll have the rest of our bracket breakdown. We'll be right back. This is PO Myospheres on UWW TV. <laughs> I learned a lot of valuable lessons playing college football. I never thought about the health benefits of exercise until I actually started to talk to coaches in college. It's not only just for performance, it's for life. My coaches instilled the importance of well-being, not only building up strength, mental health, getting enough sleep, eating properly, it's all what it is to be healthy. I decided that I want to go on a personal trainer and share my knowledge that I obtained in college about physical and mental well-being. Your home for excellence in action. The WIAC Network. Watch and download here. Matt checking in to see how Sam is doing on his project. And it's getting close to exporting now, the final step in the process. And it is complete and Sam is hyped. Finally gets complete and spikes the ball into the end zone. Sam celebrating with his colleagues and oh, they throw a flag on the play. The ref's gonna call excessive celebration. Sam is in disbelief and can't believe it. He tries to dispute the call, but the ref is not having any of it. Here at UWW, we put a lot of emphasis on shaping your involvement. Involvement helps you get to know more people with similar values and goals as yourself. The Student Involvement Office can help you get involved with organizations on campus, or we can help you start a brand new one. So what are you waiting for? 
it's time to shape your involvement at UWW. If you'd like to learn more, stop by UC127 or contact us at involvement at uww.edu or call 262-472-6217. Back to PMI Spheres live here on UWW TV. We're continuing our hour long March Madness special. Now we're moving to the bottom right of the bracket where we find the Midwest region, one a bit more local to us. The Midwest region is led by Purdue out of the Big Ten, who once again nabs a number one seed. Of course, last year they infamously became the second one seed ever to lose to a 16 seed, Fairleigh Dickinson. This year they're looking to they're looking to rebound like Virginia did from 2018 to 2019. However, to make it out of the Midwest, they'll have to get through teams like the two-seeded Tennessee Volunteers, the three-seeded Creighton, and four-seed Kansas, and of course, five-seed Gonzaga, among other notable teams. There's also plenty of potential for upsets here, like every region. Nazir, who is winning the Midwest? Oh, guys, this is, this is the fun side right now. This I'm going to make a lot of people <laughs> mad with this, okay? You're going to make All people right. confused. So we're going to start off with Purdue versus Grambling, probably. Um, I'm going to take... Purdue, we're gonna start off with that. Okay, Utah State versus TCU. We got the first upset. TCU is going to win that game. TCU, I, like it. I think that's also a toss-up game. These nine versus eight seeds. I mean, those are the it's best always. games, man. I don't know why. It's but just a coin are. toss. Yeah, they are, man. TCU is gonna win that game, though. I got. They, they're very, they're very big in the paint. and They rebound very well. Uh, Gonzaga versus McNeese. We we talked about this on Hawk Talk the other day, and I'm gonna have to go with McNeese. McNeese. Yeah. Gonzaga is not Gonzaga anymore. I will split that there. That's Ever since Chet left, they are not the same. That's fair. So, McNeese, I got McNeese winning this. And it'll be close. It'll come down to the final drive or final few drives. And, yeah, that, that'll, that'll be fun. Uh, see, Kansas versus Sanford. I want to take Sanford. I really, really do. But I can't because I don't know anything about them. And, you know, doing my research, I, they didn't seem that impressive to me. Their numbers didn't. So I'm going to have to roll Kansas on this one. But if you have Sanford in your bracket, I completely understand. I 100% understand. That's valid. Now, off to my third favorite college. Why was my fourth, by the way? So we're just going to be. Wow. Okay. My, my, my third favorite college, Oregon. <laughs> uh, seed 11 is going to beat South Carolina. And they are going, they're going to do great things in this March Madness tournament, guys. And no. Creighton versus Akron. I, it's Creighton. Creighton's going to win that. Yeah, I feel like yeah. that's going to be a blowout game. I don't think Akron's ever really proven anything. In, and March Madness or in college basketball just yet. You know, they're, they're on the come up. But anyways, we're going to take it to Texas versus Colorado State. Colorado, again, not, not going to happen. Texas is you taking that. It? Nope, not trusting any <laughs> Colorado team with basketball. We're going to take Tennessee over St. Peter's because it's Tennessee and yeah. their defense is unbelievable. We're going to start from the bottom. Tennessee versus Texas. I got Tennessee winning that. And... I, I don't think that, that game's going to even be close because I, I just think Tennessee is really good. Um, Creighton versus Oregon. I do got Creighton in this bracket, but Oregon should win that game, I, I, in my opinion. I think their offense is just great. They're coached very well. Um, but another team that is not going to make it very far is Kansas because they will be losing to McNeese, the 12th seed, who is going to make it pretty far. Ooh, and I, I don't think okay. Kansas has it in them anymore. They're, they're missing one of their big stars in McClar Jr., and he's missing the whole rest of the season with, with a, a knee injury. I hope he gets better, but Kansas, they, they are going down to big nice. And, man, this is going to make our producer mad, but I got TCU over Purdue, and that's, that's just how it's going to be, guys. <laughs> Purdue's awesome. not going to make it pretty far. So uh, in the Midwest, to finish these the, in this week 16, I got McNeese beating TCU. If, if McNeese makes it this far, they have to go far, okay? So TCU will make it far over Purdue. 
but they'll unfortunately lose to McNeese, who is going to just stun the world. This is my sleeper wow. team. Okay. They're going to be great. Interesting. And then I have Tennessee over Creighton, and then we get to the lead eight. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but no, I'm just kidding, guys. It's Tennessee. Tennessee. <laughs> Tennessee's going to take it over McNeese. McNeese had a great run, but it's over. Uh, they're going to get blitzed in this game. Tennessee is going to make it to the Final Four in my Midwest bracket. Yeah, um, going over to mine, um, whoever it is between Grambling State and Montana State, I still think Purdue is going to win, obviously. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be what happened last year. Obviously, but it's kind of crazy, though. I don't know. They've been out the first round in the past two years. They did know. not look good against Wisconsin they in, looked in horrible. the Big Ten tournament. <laughs> they, Just keep an eye on them, guys. I'm telling you. Uh, kicking it over to Utah State and TCU, I've got the Utah State Aggies winning that game over there. Gonzaga and McNeese. Um, I got Gonzaga moving on. I'm sorry in his ear. Um, I don't see you know, it, man. I, mean, I understand it, but... Gonzaga and Kansas both, actually. They have, uh, I believe, the... Uh, what is it? Um, most consecutive, like, like uh, Sweet 16 appearances mm -hmm. in a row. Oh, yeah, I think that's right. um, Gonzaga yeah, that's right. dates right. back to, like, 2014, I want to say. Wow. So, and very, <laughs> very impressive run by them. So, keep that in mind. I got Gonzaga moving on between McNeese State. Kansas and Samford, I got Kansas moving on. Um, I like the Jayhawks. It's a close game, man. I'm it will be. Yeah. It will be, yeah, yeah for sure. I can see that. That 13 seed's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, here I've got South Carolina over Oregon for my next pick. Um, oh, I actually wow. have wow. South Carolina going very far. You guys will see. Interesting. Um, and then Creighton and Akron. I got Creighton. Um, I haven't seen anything about Akron, man. It's <laughs> my first time seeing them in March Madness, I'm pretty sure, so that'd be interesting. Um, over to Texas and Colorado State, the 7-10 matchup. Got Texas moving on. Um, you know, not a lot of upsets really in this first round for the Midwest region. Tennessee and St. Peter's. I got Tennessee moving on, the Volunteers. Then back up top, here's my big upset, right? I got Utah State over Purdue. Um, I think I, like it. I think it it's ends fun. in the second it round. It's going to end in the second no, that's round. Fair. It has I, to. I think they'll get past the <laughs> the first round, but they're gonna Purdue's gonna lose in the round of sixty two or excuse me, round of thirty two. Uh, I just I I don't believe in Purdue. I'm sorry, no. Purdue fans. Uh, Gonzaga and Kansas. Um, funny enough, I mentioned the Sweet Sixteen stat, and now it's between the two teams that have the longest active streak. So I'm gonna pick Gonzaga. Um, give them the little head nod right over there so I got them moving on South Carolina and Creighton South Carolina moving on Texas and Tennessee I got Tennessee moving on then Gonzaga and Utah State I have Gonzaga moving on there South Carolina and Tennessee don't do it man don't don't do this. I got South Carolina moving on what are we give talking me South about? Carolina what are we wow. talking give about me right South now? Carolina okay. over Tennessee yeah, I no. do not care give me an I want to see South Carolina give me an explanation. over Tennessee give me an explanation I need it <laughs> we'll get there we'll okay. get there I'm <laughs> we'll waiting. I'm I'll wait. I'll wait. <laughs> and then uh, Gonzaga in South Carolina I got South Carolina going on to the oh final my four. Gosh. That's my final four pick for the Midwest. That South Carolina to the final four. Mm -hmm. Over Tennessee and I know. over Texas. It's that that's probably my biggest what? crazy pick though, I would say, for the for the overall bracket. Okay, that that was that was pretty crazy. But now wait until you get to mine here. Oh gosh. So you guys were, you know, going pretty conservative <laughs> here, taking Purdue out in the second round. I made that mistake <laughs> last year. I was so naive to think, oh yeah, a one C won't lose to a sixteen again. So this year I'm not making that same mistake. Oh! I have Grambling beating Purdue in the Whoa. first round. Whoa! Uh, hey. This is gonna be my greatest call ever. You heard it here first. Just wait and watch. TCU, I'll have beaten Utah State. Again, yeah, nine seed. What the heck? Doesn't matter much. I will do McNeese over Gonzaga. I feel like Gonzaga, it's really more namesake at yeah, this point. Like, yeah. it, they are not For what sure. they used to be. It's more of yep. a shell. Exactly. Uh, Kansas, I will have them advancing over Samford. <sighs> so but close. It's, it's so hard to pick them right with now, that man. Injury, <laughs> it, with the injury, it will be tough. Uh, South Carolina, I will have losing to Oregon because Oregon is 7-0 in the first round over their past few entries Ooh, into I the tournament. So they, they, they've definitely got a good bit going there. Uh, Creighton over Akron, easy peasy. Texas over Colorado State. I won't go that crazy with Colorado <laughs> school. <not>. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have Tennessee going on, obviously. Tennessee over Texas. Now here's where it continues to get weird. I'll have Oregon over Creighton. I like that. 
Because yeah, they, really going into this, yeah. they are getting a key player back, a big guy, yep. and that's going to boost them. The only reason that they're in 11 is because they didn't have exactly. him for so long. So getting him back is going to be crucial. Yep. They're going to be dangerous going into this. They got hot at the end. Yep. I will have Kansas beating McNeese just off of pedigree alone, like just yep. the fact that it's Kansas that's, over yeah. McNeese. Sure, sure. It's sure, there's still the injury, but it's, it's Kansas. They're not going to lose to McNeese. It's just simple as that. Uh, Gramble, the Cinderella story ends. Uh, it's going to be TCU going on somehow. I like that. Somehow. <laughs> <laughs> and then continuing on, uh, Kansas finally runs out of juice. TCU will advance. Mm. Oregon continues to advance <laughs> over Tennessee. Okay. And then I will have Oregon continuing to advance wow. okay. over TCU right. into the Final Four. That Look. is also one of my favorite colleges. But it, it, I just tried to go in with the mindset. It's like anything's possible. Yeah, Getting no. that dark horse. An 11 seed going to the Final Four is definitely going to be strange, but you know, I love to play devil's advocate. Mm -hmm. If picking Duke wasn't already a sign enough of that, I just love to go with the crazy things that can happen within the tournament. I really might pick, I might change that to Oregon. I'm not going to lie. I, I, you're getting me on the Oregon train again, man. I really. <laughs> convincing. Yeah, I like really it. convincing, yeah. <laughs> we have one region left to get to. We'll be right back after this break. Don't go anywhere. This is P.O. Myspheres on UWW TV. We'd love to show you what it's like to be a Warhawk. Come on! <laughs> Don't miss out on your chance to be a Warhawk at UW Whitewater. You belong here! I believe sportsmanship is a it's a mutual admiration and respect for your fellow competitors. We all go through a lot to reach the point where we compete against one another. It's important to realize that. So once we're finally on the field or on the court or on the starting block, we look at each other as fellow human beings and not just competitors. Being able to recognize the hard work that other athletes are putting in creates a more positive and inclusive environment. UWW-TV has been an important part of the campus and community since 1980. Not only providing on-air learning opportunities for broadcast journalists and electronic media production students, but educating and entertaining our audiences with award-winning news, live sports coverage, original programming, as well as dedicating the mission to developing creative collaborations throughout campus. For more information, visit our website and like us on Facebook. Check us out because you got to see what's on UWW-TV. Welcome to the Anderson Library, a destination that offers many things to students and other people. At the library, there's a whole host of resources that you have support for your academics in terms of books, databases, other resources that streaming videos that you're going to use for classes. And we do pet therapy once a week, alternating Mondays and Tuesdays. So that is something that any and all student, staff, and community members can come in and join us for. Well, on the main floor of the library, we have a big chess set. So that's pretty popular to have students come in, play chess. People get really into it. You can reserve a study room. Or if it's just you're looking for something fun to do on the weekend, you can come check out our video games or our board games. You can also come check out and get a snack at their cafe. There is plenty of things to do at the Anderson Library besides just studying. For more information about the library's events and other topics, go to uwwedu library. Welcome back to PMI Spheres Live on UWW-TV. We have one region left to go in our hour-long March Madness Bracket Breakdown Special. Say that 10 times fast. So let's just jump right into it. In the West region, the number one seed is the Tar Heels of North Carolina, sliding into the spot after the previous contenders Arizona and Tennessee slipped a bit heading into the tournament. Speaking of Arizona, they are the number two seed in this region, with the 2021 champion Baylor as the three, Alabama as the four, and WCC champion St. Mary's as the five. Gabe. Take us through how you envision the West region shaking out. 
Yeah, so um, right off the bat, we got UNC and Wagner. Um, again, the 116, it's got to be North Carolina, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so up next then we got Mississippi State and Michigan State. I have Mississippi State moving on just because for your reasonings. Yeah. What? No way. What? You guys are going against Michigan State? Yeah, of course Absolutely we're going against Michigan Absolutely not. State. Absolutely. Of course we're going against Continue. Michigan State. What do Continue. you mean? Continue. Continue. No way. Absolutely not. <laughs> um, then we got a, another 5-12 matchup here, St. Mary's and Grand Canyon. I'm going to pick St. Mary's here again. It's I had my upset one. pick uh, mm -hmm. in the UAB and San Diego State. That was interesting. So I got St. Mary's moving on there. Alabama and Charleston. Here's my big upset, right? Whew. I've got 13 seed Charleston beating 4 seed Alabama. Agreed. Okay. I don't think Alabama's got it this year, you know. I know obviously they've they've done a good job all season long and really, you know, I like they've looked good. Mm. I just I think their time's going to they're just going to come to a halt. In, in the tournament, right? So, Charleston moving on there. Next up, we got uh, a really big talking point, actually, that's going on with a lot of experts uh, and uh, picks going on, is New Mexico and Clemson, the six and 11 seed. I have New Mexico moving on because that's kind of been the talk of the town is, hey, New Mexico against Clemson, that's that's a layup for New Mexico. It's like so. that Drake matchup, man. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's something yeah. about it. It's Drake Washington. <laughs> There's always those weird like seedings. It. It's just like it, man, same mm -hmm. thing. And then uh, up next, we got Baylor and Colgate. Last time I checked, Colgate was a toothpaste brand, so wow. I am picking <laughs> Baylor to move on there. Dayton and Nevada, Nevada, however you want to say it. Um, I've got Dayton moving on there for the Flyers, and then we've got Arizona and Long Beach State. I've got Arizona moving on for that one. Then looking at the round of 32, I've got North Carolina and Mississippi State. North Carolina is moving on there. St. Mary's and Charleston. Charleston, your, your time was fun, but I got St. Mary's moving on. I'm sorry. Uh, New Mexico and Baylor. Give me the Bears in that one right there. I do think, um, you know, they're obviously they won it a few years ago. I don't mm -hmm. think that's something to ignore. So they know what it's like to be there. Dayton and Arizona. I got Arizona moving on there. Moving on to my Elite Eight, I have North Carolina, St. Mary's, and Baylor and Arizona, I'm picking North Carolina to beat out St. Mary's there. And then Baylor and Arizona, I have Arizona moving on. For my final four pick, North Carolina and Arizona, the one-two matchup, I've got Arizona moving on, you know? I got, yeah, I like I've, I've got Arizona like moving on. Obviously, the final four is going to be in Arizona this year. So mm -hmm. I kind of like the, the homer pick there going on. I, I think like that. they're going to use that, that home court advantage to, uh, or maybe uh, home field advantage, whatever you want to call it, to, to kind of propel themselves. Not bad, not bad. All right, so we're going to start off with North Carolina versus Wagner. Wagner, congratulations, but this is your time to leave. <laughs> North Carolina is moving on to the round of 32. Michigan State will beat Mississippi State. And that's just the fact. I think I, I don't Michigan Michigan State is so good at every sport for some reason. Like slightly <laughs> slightly just really good yeah. at every sport. Mm -hmm. So I just don't see Mississippi State really getting past that team. They're so experienced. So I, I'm gonna take Michigan State moving on to the round of thirty two. St. Mary's versus GCU. Wow, this is a this is a <laughs> tough game too for me. I'm gonna go with GCU though. I'm gonna go, it's really hard wow. to bet against St. Mary's. It really is. That I don't is, know. Yeah. It's really hard. Is that 12-5? But I think GCU, I think they got it this year, man. I really do. I don't know. Their offense, their re the way they rebound, their defense is a little lackluster, but, man, everything else is just amazing. They're, they're a great team. They put together a great team over there. And Alabama versus Charleston. I got Charleston. I got Charleston. I got two upsets in a row, guys. 12 oh, versus I like 13. That. I like that. 12 versus 13 Not next bad. round. I think this is going to be a great little matchup once I get to it. Um, Clemson versus New Mexico. That's th This is three in a row in New Mexico. I got New Mexico <laughs> uh, beating Clemson. Clemson will not... Make it out the first round, in my opinion. No, I don't think they got no. it this year. Mm. Uh, Baylor versus Colgate, as you said, toothpaste. I got <laughs> Baylor. I got Baylor winning that by 40. Dayton versus Nevada. I got Nevada winning that. I, okay. I don't think I don't think Dayton's got it in. I, I don't know much about it. I did a little research on them, too. Uh, you know, they, they play great offense. I think they're going to be – it's going to be a great game. It's going to come down to the wire. But I think Nevada, last second shot, something, something crazy for March. Uh, Arizona versus Long Beach. Don't have to say much about that one. We're going to take Arizona. Um, Arizona versus Nevada. I'm going to take Arizona. I think Arizona's just they, they, their team all around. Offense, defense, coaching, doesn't matter. Communication, all of that, they just got it. So they're going to make it very far. 
New Mexico versus Baylor. I got New Mexico beating Baylor. I know Ooh, you. I know wow. you said Baylor's yeah. been there before. They have, yeah. and I, I like Baylor a lot. But there's something about New Mexico's offense that is just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Something about their defense as well. So their offense is just it's something. Every time I watch, I'm like, oh my goodness. Okay, <laughs> but New Mexico, I got them going pretty far. Now here's here's the fun part. Twelve versus thirteen. Now this is this wow. is going to blow the world away. I got GCU <laughs> over Charleston. Uh, GCU, Grand Canyon University, man, that's in Arizona too. They, yeah. they, they want it. They want it just as much. So yeah, GCU is going to try to push for it. And <laughs> North Carolina versus Michigan State. Hey, North Carolina is just deep. They're just they're yeah. they're deeper. They have better coaching. They have better players. Mm. But you know, Michigan State, they're going to put up a fight. They're going to. There's going to be a great first half, in my opinion. But in the second half, North Carolina is going to take that by a storm. Now, we're going to take. Oh my goodness, one second. Okay, here we go. <laughs> North Carolina versus GCU. This is going yeah. to be a great game, guys. I know it's one versus twelve, no way. but it's going to be a good game. Mm -hmm. I'm taking oh, North Carolina. Though, oh, I was about to no, say. No, no, no. Don't get me wrong. Good, good, good it's going to be a great say. game. Though. I agree with that. It will be that. first first half. I'm, I'm, I promise you, GC is going to they're, they're going to shock the world. They're going to make wow. make it you know make a little notice. Uh, New, Me New Mexico versus Arizona, eleven versus two, just like the one versus twelve. So, mm -hmm. eleven versus two. I got Arizona. I think Arizona is going to push past them. They, these two teams relatively have you know the the easier path. I, I would say Arizona has a really easy path in my opinion. They have the easiest path for a two seed I've seen in a long time. So I got North Carolina and Arizona facing off, but I got North Carolina taking that game against Arizona. I do like Arizona winning though. I think that's a great True. pick as well. Mm -hmm. But I don't, North Carolina is just deep, man. They have so yeah. many good players yeah. on that team. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not being biased when I say this, but I have a friend on that team named Seth, Seth Trumbull. Uh -huh. But that team is just unbelievable. Seth Trumbull, former Mr. Basketball of the Year here <laughs> uh, in, in Wisconsin from out of Menominee Falls. Shout out to him. But, yeah, North Carolina, they're going to they're gonna do a lot of great things they're making to the Final Four. All right. I like that. All right, well, obviously, I've been making some strange calls so far. I'm going to do something that's going to surprise you all. I'm ready. I'm going to go full chalk for the first round, which is completely off-brand for what I've been doing. I'm doing okay. North Carolina. That's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. I'm doing Mississippi State, Michigan State, Big Ten. Nope, that, that's the I basic know. rule. <laughs> St. Mary's, I just I feel like that's got a greater pedigree. I feel like I've seen Grand Canyon commercials, and I always thought it was like an online yeah. college. I'm telling you, dude. So, <laughs> they got, just like, oh, shit, they've got a basketball team? They got like, something, <laughs> man. <laughs> I've got Alabama beating Charleston. I've got Clemson beating New Mexico. I feel like ACC just having that conference tie. Like that's a conference I can actually respect. Mm -hmm. uh, I respect them, yeah. Baylor, I've got them beating Colgate. Maybe if it was like Crest or something, it would be harder. But <laughs> <laughs> we got uh, Dayton over Nevada. Sets of time. <laughs> and then obviously Arizona. Arizona's going to be doing great. And then I'm going to do something else crazy. Do chalk again. I'm going to take North Carolina over Mississippi State. Saint, uh, Alabama over St. Mary's. Uh, Baylor over Clemson, mm -hmm. Arizona over Dayton. And now I'm going to go back to just random things. <laughs> Alabama beating North Carolina. Whoa. Okay, hear me out. Whoa. Here is a crazy okay. thing. Okay. You figure Nick Saban just left. This team, like, they've lost the football a bit. This fan base is going to be rallying around. This is going to be putting like, all their pride okay. into it. That's and they're going to be, like, fighting in honor of Nick Saban or something strange like that. Okay. And he's going to make an amazing run into the playoff or tournament. And then Arizona beating Baylor. Again, that seems pretty straightforward. And then this bit, I could honestly go <laughs> flippy-flopping either way, but I'm going to do Alabama. What? I am just... On? Anything can happen. Yep, Alabama and Duke in the Final Four. Alabama and Duke in the Final Four. <laughs> what? Because why not? Anything can happen. And Oregon. And Oregon. Oregon. Oregon's the final. I like Oregon, though. Well, Oregon's They're good. the better of the three, but Jesus. Pro probably. But, <laughs> but like I said, you, it's March Madness. you got to embrace the madness. I mean, getting a perfect That's, bracket, you got a one, in, one out of two to the 67th power chance. So... Why can't it be this one? There's it's absolutely no way North Carolina is losing to Alabama. Let's just put that no. out there. Absolutely I, no way. Injury. An injury could happen. It could, but it won't. You're uh, not wishing I, it. I, I, no, I'm not wishing it. <laughs> okay. But like, okay. I'm, I'm seeing the future. All right. Okay. All right, psychic. So, so you're predicting an injury. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We've now broken down each region talking about who we think will come out of it. After our final break, we'll finish our off our bracket preview special by discussing the final four and who we're picking as our champion for 2024. Stay tuned, this is PMI Spheres on UWW-TV.
inside the 30. Touchdown. Michaela burns it. An incredible finish by Hall. NCAA and its member schools offer nearly half a million college athletes a path to go pro in something other than sports. Learn more at NCAA.org. You know, for Hawk Talk, you know, I mean, especially on days I'm hosting, uh, you really need to be up early looking at those news stories. Even the night before, I've been finding topics that I can incorporate in the show, and I feel like we get a conversation going. Once you get the opportunity to do that with other people who appreciate it the same level as you do, it makes it that much more enjoyable. For everything sports, tune in Monday through Thursday at 91.7 The Edge or watch us on UWW-TV. Are you bored on campus? Then come down to Warhawk Alley in the University Center. We have everything you need to take a break from your studies and have a great time. So come blow off some steam with our air hockey, darts, foosball, video games, eight top-of-the-line Brunswick pool tables, and our 10-lane bowling alley. We have nightly specials, blacklight bowling, tournaments, and tons of chances to win prizes. For more information or to set up a reservation, call Warhawk Alley at 262-472-5681. Here at UW-Whitewater Intramural Sports, we have a motto, a sport for everyone and everyone in a sport. Had a blast. Always have fun at intramurals. Every day we strive to go above and beyond that goal by providing healthy exercise, promoting leisure education, and giving students that competitive atmosphere they are looking for. Yes! 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 It's exciting. Brings me back to those uh, high school days with Friday Night Lights. With our 25 different intramural sports offered, we guarantee that we have a sport for you. Go to our website and find your sport today. Welcome back to PMI Sphere's March Madness Special. We've talked about all four regions in the bracket this year, but now it's time for everyone for what everyone has been waiting for, our final four and championship predictions. This is what it all comes down to, really. Nazir, run us through who's in your final four one more time and talk about who you see winning it all. All right, so I'm going to start with south to midwest, okay, Houston versus Tennessee. Houston versus Tennessee, wow, what a game that, that could be if that does come to come true. So uh, I think this game is going to be a very defensive game. I think Houston and Tennessee, they're just, they're very good on defense. And their offense is great, too, don't get me wrong, but th that, this game is going to come down to the best defense. And I think Houston's going to take that. I think Tennessee, they're, they're great. They're, they're a very well-rounded team, but Houston's a better well-rounded team. So I'm going to take them to move on to the championship game. Now, East versus West. I usually take the West in this. I usually take the West in, this, uh, in, in these brackets, but I'm going to have to go with East. You know, Milan versus Seth Trimble, those are my boys. Milan, I went to high school with him, and, and he's a Pewaukee native. So I'm going to go Iowa State. Uh, I'm gonna go Iowa State versus Houston, and man, this is this is a little rematch that I've been waiting for all year. Houston, they got smacked a few times by Iowa State this year, and you know Iowa State—they're a young team. They're a young, very fun to watch team. They they shoot the lights out. You know they're 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 great all around on offense, but I think this game they're gonna be lacking a lot of defense. I think Houston's gonna be back on revenge time, and I think this is their year to win it. And I think Houston will win it over Iowa State, and I got. The total points, 165, so, you know, relatively a higher regular scoring game, but I think it's going to be a lot more intense than people think if this does become the, the championship game. Sure. Yeah, so uh, going over my final four again, um, I got UConn and Arizona, and then we have Houston and South Carolina. Let's just get the easy one out of the way first. I got UConn over Arizona. Uh, they're going to move on to the national championship easy. game for me. <laughs> Houston and South Carolina, the one versus the six seed, okay? Wow. Oh, God. I got South Carolina. Give me South Carolina. Upset in Houston. I don't care. I don't care. Wow. Houston, you guys have been great all season long. Where? Season's going to come to an end, unfortunately. Where did this come from, man? Season's going to come to an end. Do I, before you continue, our producer <laughs> said some crazy things earlier to me. He said Longhorn or Longwood will beat 
Houston, first round, 16 seed, by the way. So just keep that in mind. If, you, if you're working on your brackets right now, keep that on the lookout. That's a 16 seed to watch out for. Continue, though. <laughs> Houston's winning it all, though, just so you guys know. <laughs> all right, well, anyway. Um, <laughs> UConn and South Carolina for my national championship game. Um, I got UConn winning it all against the Gamecocks. Back to back. Uh, 74, oh, back to not? back. First time since Florida, since I believe it was 07 and 08, I think. I thought it was 06. Iowa State is beating them. 07. It was 07. Could it was 07. Yeah. It was 07. Oh, 07 was the one for sure. It was 07. Yeah. 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 But, uh, but yeah, I got uh, UConn repeat <clears throat> champions here. Um, I have them winning 74 65 over South Carolina. Um, and they're going to be the first team since that Florida team in the mid 2000s there to win back to back. That's going to be a really easy championship game for UConn if that does happen. I'll oh, yeah. That. It's not going to be even close, in my opinion. I don't think, I, I genuinely don't think South Carolina can even keep up with them, like player for player. I don't think it's even. No, so. I. I I, I think they'll I, I think they'll keep up, but I think UConn's gonna pull away more towards the end. I think they're gonna I feel like realize like, like halftime they're gonna be like <laughs> up by fifteen. I, I I think it'll be close, but I think UConn is gonna realize like wait a minute, this is South Carolina. We're better than them. <laughs> let's just get let's get our season over and done with, and let's just get this repeat champion real quick. Fair enough, fair enough. For me, uh, real real cap, UConn in the Final Four. That's the one logical one. Uh, <laughs> gonna have Alabama. Really could be Arizona, but got Alabama. Uh, gonna have UConn winning that. That's pretty straightforward. That seems pretty logical. Like it, like it, like it. Then we've got Duke, Oregon. Again, filling out the bracket. Getting to that point felt right. Getting, and once I wrote it down, it's like, that doesn't seem as right, but you gotta roll with it. You know, if, <laughs> if every decision up to that point was going good, Many gotta worried. stick with it. Yeah, no. exactly. Yep. And then, uh, but I'll say Oregon finally crumbles. I think Duke will be able to hold out. And then UConn will also be the return a repeat champion, 84-73 yep. over Duke. And a bit of a comfortable victory. I got Houston or Iowa State winning. That's all I gotta say. We'll have, to, we'll have to wait and see, I suppose. Maybe one of us is white. Right. There you have it. Our official 2024 March Madness predictions with under 24 hours to go until the tournament officially gets underway. Good luck to all the teams competing, along with everyone filling out a bracket this year. Perhaps we've just had a first ever perfect bracket filled out on the show tonight. We shall see. No. We, <laughs> we thank you, as always. Probably for not. <laughs> For excusing our momentary interruption of sports from your regular daily schedule, we'll be taking a week off next week, but return on April 3rd at 7 in the evening, going back to our half-hour format. Until then, for Nazir Spencer and Gabe Sadowski, we thank you again for watching. Good night.